Great. So let's see the slides. Here we go. So, I mean, I'm the first speaker after the keynote, so it's a bit uh, kind of tough. And after what uh, Peter mentioned about uh, ISO standard and things, I need to warn you that this presentation is not uh, compliant. But uh, let's see what we have here. So I'm going to speak about uh, urbanitizing and uh, what we try to do, uh, integrating uh, weather station uh, data and uh, Landsat thermal data. And in particular, like we adopted uh, initially a simple approach to see if it's good enough and we'll move uh, towards some more complex. Uh, okay, so a bit of context. Uh, this work is carried on within the users project that is uh, kind of one of the sister project of uh, the Green Deal action that we heard these last days. And But the focus of the users is to kind of have a data space at the city level. So street level data or so like close to the city and to help municipality actually plan and do things. We have four pilot cities and yeah, you can read more on the website. So uh, briefly about the use case definition. So different work packets were involved in the needs and definition of the pilots. And uh, so the first two pack work packets actually like uh, identified that uh, among all four pilots, uh, the urban Thailand use case was of interest. And uh, like work packets, packets for was like, uh, I mean, aiming at uh, uh, developing tools or deploying existing tools. So here just briefly, like a uh, kind of overview the tool, the, like the collaborative tool we use to kind of arrive to uh, data requirements. And uh, I mean, I'm sure you cannot read it, but <laughs> just to give an idea. Uh, briefly about urbanization, what it is for the ones that don't know about. So it's been, I mean, measured since the 1800 by Luke Howard. And he noticed that in London, like uh, the city center was actually warmer than the countryside. And uh, the effect is mainly due to the inertia of the materials. So like uh, concrete and all the others that are more capable to store heat and during the day and release it. Uh, late afternoon during or during the night. So since uh, look our studies, um, I mean, that availability is not an issue anymore, kind of. Uh, indeed, like you use uh, thermometers, now we have a lot of more sensors. But uh, the limitation, current limitation are more like uh, towards the scale or resolution of this data that are available. And uh, for example, speaking about uh, uh, I see MWF uh, urban uh, Italian use cases. Uh, they are developing with uh, uh, Vito. Uh, we heard today like Destiny, uh, and they are actually deploying uh, this kind of paper that is a urban climate model model that uh, to create this uh, digital twin. So the, the aim of our work was to try to get to lower resolution of the current model and to see what we get with a simple model. So here what's Ferrara. So Ferrara is one of the pilots. So just brief introduction. Uh, what Ferrara will look like at 100 meter resolution on a thermal night flight airborne is, sorry, is a resample of course. And um, I mean, you can distinct the urban aggregates and infer that uh, it's hotter than the surroundings, but it's really difficult to get an understanding of what's happening at the street level. And if uh, we, I mean, the resolution, I think, is worse than what's meant to be. Uh, but <laughs> the, if we have sample to 30 meters, that was meant to be uh, Castello Estenses in the city center of Ferrara. And you can distinguish uh, maybe the uh, warmer water during night that is uh, surrounding a castle and probably a road, but still like it's difficult to like understand the, the phenomena that are playing at a uh, neighbor scale or uh, street level. And also like uh, Landsat uh, acquisition are mainly taken during like Landsat thermal acquisition, mainly taken during daylight. There are a few scenes on nighttime, but 
Uh, the things that differ is the, like, of course, we have uh, sunlight, direct sunlight that affects the retrieval of the land surface temperature in this case. So uh, this was the actual, let's say, native resolution because those images were taken from airborne, of course, and uh, at one meter resolution for this case. And we see a lot uh, different phenomena and uh, heterogeneity of temperature uh, playing a role at uh, city level, uh, uh, street level, sorry. And here the Stansis Castle is uh, better defined as a result. Of course, with our simple model, we don't aim to get uh, like uh, frequent data one meter resolution is a bit too much or too early, but uh, we will try to improve uh, uh, up to 30 meters or slightly lower. So the idea was to gather data from um, like some weather station that was uh, like deployed by Airbrake project and to use like uh, OGC standards to do this. And the, this kind of work workflow start from the needs of the Ferrara pilot that expressed uh, so they want to identify priorities and hotspot within the urban area and take decision to mitigate the urbanitized effect. It's quite general, but at the end, I mean, you need a map of temperature, specialized well. And so the idea was, okay, we ingest uh, static data and auxiliary data like from the municipality into a model and we get a current like last hour uh, temperature map and then you can derive the urban Thailand map and some indexes. And then uh, the idea was to, okay, let's uh, also get some uh, weather forecast API and see what if, for example, uh, Aron from Meteo France uh, with a grid of 1.3 kilometers can uh, give us some insight and try to predict the temperature actually for the next 48 hours. So this was the original plan. Of course, nothing got to plan. Uh, so far. Um, so we did a kind of a data availability introspection into the use case. And uh, so it appeared that uh, those weather stations, unfortunately, are being deployed recently. So we don't have a kind of long time series. So that's why they are marked orange. Uh, the Landsat uh, scenes are often like cloudy. So like this one. So we have uh, missing data points. And that, yes, of course, we have uh, a lot of ancillary data that have been acquired uh, during the years and recently, but we don't have a um, kind of a meteorological uh, model to validate or approach or to confront against. Meanwhile, in Trento, so where uh, from the same Bruno is coming from, uh, we have a kind of more robust uh, weather station network currently, and um, we are more likely, like it's less cloudy, less often. Uh, we don't have all those uh, thermal uh, recent uh, ancillary data, but we do have, like, thanks to the university, a uh, downscale model over the city. So the idea was, okay, let's let's try to build a simple model like on Trento, see how it works, let's see if, if it got validated, and then try to apply the same methodology on Ferrari. So I'm going to speak about Trento. Uh, this kind of giving you an overview. Uh, it's just south of Bolzano, if you don't know. So Bolzano, probably this case is going to be like double up with triple up in this case. Uh, we, the Meteo Network uh, has an API where you can access data in a like, uh, consistent manner. And uh, this is like just an example scene of uh, Landsat uh, thermal band uh, over time. So what we did is like a simple regression. So for... Um, you, we adopted like a calibration scheme on from August 2016 to September 22, and these are like uh, the both Landsat scene temperature and the uh, air temperature of the station. Uh, I mean, only on the date of the scenes. The, the weather station, of course, is more uh, dense. Uh, and uh, of course, they, they, are, they differ because like uh, land surface temperature of Landsat uh, is not air temperature. So like a simple regression and uh, you got this. Okay, so now that you did a regression, the idea was to specialize, to actually correct the regression for like NDVI and elevation, like uh, with a geographically weighted regression. And uh, so if you correct the coefficient of the regression and you apply them to predict the same station, you got the green line. 
and it it doesn't look like fitting as well, of course, as the red line mod is taking account the axial and UI and the elevation. So once you got that, the idea was to specialize the coefficients. So using like uh, freezing with external drift and using the uh, elevation model as secondary variable, uh, we specialize the two uh, coefficient. And having once you specialize the two coefficient, you can compute the air temperature like uh, linear algebra. Here, like uh, the kind of uh, expression of the standard deviation of the intercept. So, uh, of course, I mean, based on creasing, like on the station, the standard deviation is quite low, uh, and but it sits below the one degree. So here are some results on uh, the calibration. Of course, we expected the uh, median or the error, like between uh, the measure and the predicted temperature during calibration to jump around zero. Uh, is reasonably well, like if we look at each station besides this last one. But OK, we can say more or less is calibrated. Uh, so the, we applied this to some dates, just to give you an example. Of course, you can do it on every scene. And this the kind of Addis Valley, and the red dots are the weather station. And the specialization of uh, air temperature like, uh, is reasonable. And uh, the low temperature here is actually caused by the kind of cloud masking uh, process that is not perfect in the sense that some uh, like uh, temperature from Landsat that was measured on, measured on top of the clouds uh, was um, left, let's say, in the product. And then, of course, uh, those low temperature are due to. So zooming in to Trento, like, uh, of course, you can see well the Aliza River that is colder, and some like major hotspots around the cities. Okay, so this is just uh, kind of open stream up uh, background to give you a feeling of the street network. And then we say, okay, let's uh, try to validate this and see what uh, is doing when we try to predict temperature like blindly. So we took the uh, time series from September 22 to September 23 this year and uh, computing the difference uh, we got a uh, kind of uh, <clears throat> temperature different median that is uh, I mean wasn't expected to work so good in the sense that uh, if you exclude that point uh, the temperature prediction is within like one degree for all the station but that's uh, kind of uh, on the station that uh, in the same location so we thought, okay, what the comparison with the, the specialized uh, air temperature of the URF model, that's why we came here actually in the first place. So University of Tento provided like uh, some dates on 2016 and now they're gonna provide the new ones uh, on uh, a specialized uh, meteorological model. So these are their parameterization in the sense that uh, they did the parameterization only on the urban aggregate. So like to make a fairer comparison, we just need to look, let's say on these parts that are uh, more like resolute and uh, outside the parameterization, like the model restitute, like more uniform uh, values. So this is the model. This is like the specialized air temples that we did with the, in that date, of course, uh, and that time. Uh, you can easily recognize the Aliza River that, of course, is not parameterized in their model, so it doesn't pop out. But uh, if we look at the urban aggregate, uh, the comparison in, is fairer. And I mean, of course, there are extreme going out, uh, but the, the white pixels, uh, like uh, these are upscale to 100 meters to match the uh, model resolution. Uh, there is a reasonable match, uh, we say, for uh, such a simple model. And of course, outside the features uh, coming from Landsat sensor are uh, dominating because we don't have a model there. Uh, the hotspot that we see in the difference map are due to probably the correction, emissivity correction that are needed for uh, Landsat. That, of course, is not uh, like taking account exactly the the exact emissivity of the materials that you see uh, that date. Okay, so uh, kind of summary up this simple model. Uh, 
we use a really simple model, you see. Uh, and of course, it kind of works, but it has major drawbacks in the sense that we depend on uh, Landsat uh, over past time to kind of predict currently. And as you see, the cloud, uh, cloud cover is an issue, as well as we need a long time series to make the regression more robust. So the idea now is to upgrade the downscale model uh, with the university and include more ancillary data and also outside the urban environment. So to have a more robust uh, metrics afterwards uh, in the comparison and also try to move uh, to this Landsat free specialization, I call it. But uh, the idea is to okay learn from the last uh, scene available of Landsat on the area of interest, but uh, predict the temperature without the current acquisition because this simple regression, of course, need the Landsat to start with. And then, of course, we, we will go back to apply this use case to a pilot. And uh, also, I'm looking forward, uh, I, I will chat uh, further with Vito uh, on their um, use case, actually, and the development on the digital twin to probably improve the things together. OK, well, thank you. I haven't looked at the clock, so I don't know if it was too fast, too slow. Oh, you're right on time. Do we have any questions? Anyone has a question for Rene? Hello. Hello. Thanks for the talk. Um, maybe this is going to be a silly question because I guess I know maybe the answer, but to... Um, yeah, to, for to start a bit of a discussion, sure. how would it be more useful to have more time series of Landsat imagery for you? Is that a, I mean, because Landsat you only have every 16 days if, I mean, if, if you have uh, cloudless conditions and things like that, but if you could provide your time series, a more dense time series of Landsat, uh, would that be useful for you? I mean, so this just to have a feeling of it was like, I think in this period, like 250 scenes. And of course, uh, in this way, if you have more frequent Landsat acquisition, you could like update the model more frequently. So yes, it's more yeah, useful. Yeah. But uh, the point is like, try to get the specialization information from Landsat because it's uh, lastly the more resolute and more uh, less also resolute in space and time uh, data that we can have so far on thermal, even though the original band is on 100 meter as well. Uh, so probably we need to move far from a regression model like this, I guess, uh, in order to be able to predict the uh, hourly uh, temperature. Yeah, because yeah. The, the, the question is, I mean, we worked at some point at uh, downscaling um, MSG data, okay. our, uh, or MODIS or MSG data to Landsat, a okay. specific thing for this kind of uh, uh, applications. And I wonder if this, I mean, how, how yeah, maybe we should talk on that. Sure, that, uh, sure. I, I would it could to. provide something that. Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I'm, I'm totally open to discuss. Cool. 